بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وسلط والسلام علی اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین محمد رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ علیہ وسلم وسلم تسلیما کثیرا کثیرا فما بعدو My brothers and sisters um, This is the second part of advice from the Muslim thinker Nagbetin Erbakan uh, May Allah have mercy on him He says some wonderful things now and, and if you look at it, all his, uh, all the things he's saying are focused on action. And this is the reality. This is the reality is that uh, unless we get our action part right, uh, nothing else matters. So he says, listen to me. <clears throat> if Islam was just prayer, reading Quran, and glorification of Allah, which is Tasbih, would the grave of the companion, the Sahabi Abu Ayyub al-Ansari anhu, be in Istanbul? Think about that, huh? He says if, they, if Islam was only worship, so prayer, reading Quran and so on, would the grave of the Sahabi Abu Ayyub al-Ansari anhu, be in Istanbul? Abu Ayyub, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari uh, anhu, he was, they say he was about maybe in his 90s, so maybe in and, and late 90s, so in 95, 97. And uh, when the, uh, the army was going to, uh, to try to conquer uh, Constantinople, Abu Ayyub Ansari Radhiallahu he went with the army, he, vol- he volunteered, and his sons, and others, they said to him, look, you are old, you are, you know, 97, and you are uh, obviously not in great health. And you don't have to do this. You have taken part in every uh, ghazwa and every sariya, uh, every ghazwa with, with Rasulullah Sallam, with, uh, in many saraya, and you have taken part in, in, in you have been the companion of Rasulullah Sallam for, you know, from the, from the beginning, and you don't need to do this. So he said, how will I answer to Allah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered infiru khifafa wa thikhala. Allah said, leave your houses. Infiru khifafa wa thikhala. Whether you are light or heavy, whether you are rich or poor, whether you are old or young, in, in all the uh, aspects of the meaning of, uh, of, of uh, khifafa wa thikhala. So, he said, how will I answer Allah? I need these people. So then as they were going, obviously it was a tough, imagine going from Medina all the way up um, to Constantinople, so to Turkey. So on the way he fell sick and he knew that this was his last time. So he made this wasiya, he made this... Uh, his, this advice, his last parting advice, and he said that when I die, take my body along with you until you reach the walls of Constantinople and bury me in the shade of the walls of Constantinople. So he said, take me to the final point of the army, wherever the army goes, to the end of this, and then bury me there. So they asked him, I said, why are you asking this, uh, making this strange was here? Why, why are you asking us to do that? Carry the dead body, carry your dead body all the way. He said, because I want to say to Allah, Ya Allah, while I was alive, I went out in your path. And even after I died, I went out in your path. Alhamdulillah. This was the jazbah. This was the passion, the feeling of the Sahaba. Rizwanullahi alayhi wa jma'in. Then, Arabakan says, if you do not teach your children halal and haram, the worldly life and the hereafter, teach them whatever else you want, you will not make men out of them. If you teach, if you do not teach your children halal and haram, what's uh, halal and what's haram in this worldly life, um, teach them whatever else you want, it won't matter. It will not make men out of them, meaning that they will not be noble people. Now this shows the importance of the boundaries, the hudud of Islam. 
that whatever we do, we must keep within the boundaries of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not permit. That's a very, very important thing for us to always keep in mind, never get sidetracked because uh, this is absolutely uh, critical. Finally, um, he said, Muslims who do not care about politics will be ruled by rulers who do not care about Islam. Muslims who do not care about politics will be ruled by rulers who do not care about Islam. And that's why, as they say, uh, to people who say, I'm not interested in politics, we say, well, you may not be interested in politics, but politics is interested in you. So if you do not participate in politics, you will become a victim to politics. Right? If you don't participate in, in politics, you will become a victim to politics. And that's why it's very important not to fall into that trap. Um, just think about this. How many people in this world today, uh, they talk about, you know, they talk about all kinds of stuff. They talk about, uh, especially politics. Eh? Politics is a big, big, big uh, topic of discussion for everyone, right? We talk about this and that and so-and-so must do this, so-and-so must do that, this party, that party. But when it comes to voting, how many Muslims go out and vote? This is a classic, this is a, this is a complaint in almost every country. Muslims will not go out and vote. They will not take the trouble. On that day, they will find, oh, it's a long weekend, let's go for a holiday. Do not go for a holiday. Do not take a vacation on that weekend. Make sure you get up. Make sure you go to the polling booth. Make sure, make sure you... Make sure you cast your vote, that is worth more than all the political discussion that you have in your in your drawing rooms. But we don't do that. Now that is so, so sad and it's it's evil because then it means that all this politi political discussion you were having is completely worthless. Right? What's the point of that? Finally, that's why we have the famous uh, quotation of Imam Razi Ramatullah he said that all humanity is dead. All human beings are dead except those who have knowledge. And by knowledge, he means knowledge of Islam. He said all human beings are dead except the ones who have knowledge. He said all the ones who have knowledge are sleeping except the ones who practice that knowledge, who have amal. All people of knowledge are sleeping except those who are practicing that knowledge. And he said, all those who are practicing the knowledge are in loss, except those who have ikhlas, who have sincerity in their practice. All the people who have knowledge, who are practicing that knowledge, they are at loss, they are in loss, except those who have sincerity in their actions, ikhlas in their amal. And he says, all the people who have ikhlas, all the people who have sincerity, um, they are also in loss, uh, except those who do not have takabur. He said, all the people of ikhlas, all the people of uh, who have uh, sincerity, they are in danger, except those who are not arrogant. So humility, the position of humility in action. So these are the four steps. Ilm, amal, ikhlas, and no takabur, no arrogance. So, without knowledge, we are dead. And then first and foremost and most important of the knowledge is Ashadu la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, knowledge of Tawheed, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we worship only Allah and nobody else. And then, this knowledge must be acted upon. So, if I say I that Allah is only worthy of worship, then the first step that I must do is to worship Allah. Which means that when I <clears throat> when I uh, when the time for salah comes, I pray. I don't leave salah, and so on, so on for for the rest of it. And then this amal, this action, must be with done only and only for the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, for no other reason. That is what ikhlas means. Ikhlas is sincerity with a desire only to please Allah. And finally, what comes with this when you have knowledge and when you have when you are alhamdulillah. By the grace of Allah, when you are working according to that knowledge, then shaitan plays games and brings up uh, kibur, brings up uh, takabur, 
makes you feel that you're better than others because, oh, look at them, you know, they don't do anything, I'm doing so much. No. Uh, he says, Imam, Imam, Imam Razi Ramtullah says, that is the killer. So, that is a big danger. So, don't fall into that trap. So, ilm, amal, ikhlas and lack of takabur, meaning inkisari, meaning humility, humbleness, uh, uh, in, uh, and and uh, uh, what, what is, you know, complete humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to uh, practice some of these things, if not all, that we talk about and we remind each other about, so that when we meet him, inshallah, that we will not be in a state where we are, uh, where we have to be ashamed.